Charlie. Hmm? I just saw someone down there. In this wilderness? Where? Over here on the starboard side. Can't see anyone? Shall I turn around and land? Yeah, I think maybe you're better. Would you please let him know that I called? Okay, thank you. Police sergeant's out, Jim. Where exactly did you find this fellow, Greg? About 100 miles north of Wintonia. Charlie's covering that area again. You ever seen him before? No. Miles from the nearest town, yet clean shaven. From his appearances, he hadn't been wandering around too long, either. Where is he now? I put him in a room in the observation block. Why, is he ill? No, I don't like the way he looks. Who is he? Where'd he come from? I'm asking myself those same questions, Jim. Nothing on him except a gun, half a pack of cigarettes, and a little change. No papers, no nothing. I do know one thing. He wasn't anxious to be found. He was hiding behind a rock when he passed out. Why? I'll ask him when he comes to. What is this place? Hey, where am I? It's the Flying Doctor Base Hospital. Hospital? What am I doing here? A plane found you in the outback. Why'd they bring me here? I don't need a doctor. Where are my clothes? Please, stay where you are. You have a temperature. He's asking for his clothes. Dr. Graham. How are you feeling? Rotten. Thanks. What's your name? Barney Mason. Where are you from, Mr. Mason? Westway. Whereabouts in Westway? What is this, the third degree? No, I need the information for the chart. Well, if you must know... Maple Avenue. Why were you uh, wandering around the outback? Making my way across country, looking for work. Do you uh, always carry a gun? Tough parts of the country. Lots of wild animals. What's the matter, Mr. Mason? Nothing. Please, please leave me alone. Well, now, look, I'm here to help you. I, I can't if you don't tell me what's wrong pain in my back. Really bad. I can't, can't breathe properly. Where in your back? All over. Had it long? No, I, I woke up with it. Have you strained yourself at all? Yes. M might have been. Anything else bothering you? My whole head's going to burst. Well, you've a slight temperature, probably due to exposure. Just uh, try to relax and take it easy, huh?
He lied to you, Greg. I know Westway like the back of my hand, and there's no Maple Avenue there, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Well, you better get his clothes out of there, Mary, and keep an eye on him. I'll stop by a little later. I'm concerned about his temperature and rapid pulse. Doctor Plane to base. Flying Doctor Plane calling base. Base here. Go ahead, Charlie. I'm 20 miles northeast of Wintonia. What's up? Just spotted a truck. Abandoned by the look of it. I'm going down. Get Doctor Graham if he's around. Flying Dr. Plane to base. Go ahead, Charlie. Greg, I think I know what that fellow was doing in the outback. He was driving a truck southwest when he ran out of fuel. What gives you that idea? He had a packet of cigarettes on him, remember? I found a butt in the truck. Same brand. Well, what's the license number? No plates. Now, oh, then it could have been stolen, huh? That thought crossed my mind. Have you spoken to the fellow yet? Well, he said he was a Barney Mason from Westway. Listen, Charlie, take another look at that truck and see if you can find the engine number. Then I'll go over and see the police sergeant at Broken Gate. and I'm looking for Dr. Graham. Well, he's over at the police station now. What's the trouble, baby? That man they found this morning, Dr. Graham was concerned. His temperature's now up to 103, and his pulse is very soft and rapid. Mm. I'll come along. something. Here, what can you see? Looks like a bite. Mm, it's not very large. A small animal bite, I'd say. Where did you get the bite? Can you hear me? Where did you get the bite? This bite on your arm. A rat. A rat bit me. A rat? How long ago? Five, six days. I... In the mine. A mine? What mine? Hmm. Under his jacket, Mary. Send on, Doctor. Hmm. Ah, the lymphatic glands are swollen. Mary, prepare a fine syringe. When Greg sees these glands, you'll want to take a puncture for examination. What's wrong with him, Doctor? Let's wait till Greg gets here, shall we? Engine number 2230548. Is here all right? Stolen. Uh, from where? A farm in Hungerbridge, five days ago. 
This patient of yours, what's he look like? Oh, I'd say about 5'11", fair, uh, square jawed, blue eyes, uh, maybe 32 years of age. Wearing uh, light trousers and a sport jacket when we found him. Did it ring a bell? Could be. I ring up headquarters in Hungerbridge. And if I come up with anything, I'll look by the base hospital. Good. Thanks, Sergeant. Well, thanks for coming along. Bet. He said he was bitten by a rat. Huh? Yes, some I, I couldn't get any more out of him. Yeah, his lungs are certainly congested. Well, what do you think, Greg? Let me examine this specimen first. I'm going over to the lab right away. Oh, there you are, Dr. Good. Is this your patient? Yes, where'd you get it? From the files. He's Jeff Martin. Stole a pair old in Brisbane a week ago. Got away with 50,000 pounds. What was he doing in the outback? Oh, he left his getaway car in an old unused mine in Hungerbridge. Stayed there overnight and stole the truck from a nearby homestead the following morning. But that was five days ago. Yes. So if he was clean and shaven when you found him, it's obvious he was hiding out in one of the homesteads. He may have left the money there. We've got to find out where. We certainly have. He was bitten by a diseased rat. He's got pneumonic plague. <laughs> highly infectious disease from that rat bite. And it's very important that anyone who has been in contact with you is treated immediately. Now listen, where have you been staying for the last five days? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Martin, Martin, please, it's urgent. You must tell me. Leave me alone. You won't get anything out of him. We're wasting our time. Here's that map you asked for, Greg. Well, let's go in this ante room here. That money's hidden in one of the homesteads. I'm certain of it. Well, I'm not concerned about the money. Sir. But 50,000. Look, I don't care if it's a million. It still isn't as important as a human life. This plague is the most infectious of all human diseases, and it's invariably fatal unless it's treated immediately. Now, whoever Martin stayed with is in danger, and they could pass it on. Isn't there a serum you can give? No, there isn't. Well, what about you and your staff? Well, we're all on three grams of sulfadiazine for the next six days, and you'd better take some before you leave. Oh, sure. Now, let's take a look at this map. Now, if Martin left Hungerbridge with a full tank of gas, he could have stayed at any of the homesteads in approximately this area. That's thousands of square miles. Well, can't you give everyone some of this stuff you're taking? No, we'd have an epidemic on our hands by that time. It'd take weeks. There must be some way of making him talk, Ray. Right? Greg, come quickly. Did he tell you anything? No. Nope. He's not likely to. He's dead. Dead. They didn't call this disease the Black Death for nothing. Once it really gets a hold of you, it's all over in 12 hours. I'd better notify Brisbane. And contact Hungerbridge. Tell them to fumigate every mine in that area. I will. 
What now, Greg? I wish I knew. We can make an appeal over the radio. No, that'd only cause a panic. Besides, someone's got 50,000 reasons to keep silent. Didn't Martin have a wife? Maybe she knows where he stayed. No next of kin, as far as I knew. What about his clothes? Where will they go? Into the furnace. Wait a minute. Hello, Mary. Bring me Martin's clothes, will you please? But handle them very carefully. Uh, nothing in those. I was hoping we'd find some clue. What does that look like to you? Wood splinters. Yeah, as though he'd been carrying newly sawn wood. Could it help? You never know. Let's see Dr. Harrison in the lab. Any luck, Greg? Ring porous with telosis in the vessels and wide medullary rays. What does that mean? It means I think we may have found something. These wood splinters are English oak, and it's not grown over here. It's been imported. Well, there's only one importer in this area. That's Collins. He's got a mill down on the Parco River. All right, then I'll call him on the radio. Flying doctor to Collins Mill. Flying doctor calling Collins Mill. Come in, please. Collins Mill receiving you. Go ahead. This is Dr. Graham, Mr. Collins, and I need some very important information, but I can't go into detail right now. But tell me, have you imported any English oak recently? English oak? Yes, I did a couple of months ago. But if you want any, it's all gone. No, no, I mean, who, uh, who bought it from you? Boy, it went in two lots. I, I see, but uh, who took it from you? A couple of homesteads far north from the province, as far as I can recall. Their names, Mr. Collins. Well, I'll have to go right through my books. I handle over 100 transactions a week, you know. Yeah, well, would you please do that for me? It's very urgent. Right, I'll, I'll call you back. Thank you. Charlie, let's head north. We can talk to him from the plane and save time. Right. found those names by now. How long before any contacts become infected? Just a matter of hours. Collinsville to Flying Doctor. Collinsville calling Flying Doctor. Yes, Mr. Collins. No luck so far, Doctor. If the bill hasn't been paid, it's not in my books. I'll have to go through all my invoices. Well, look, could you please? It's This is really a matter of life and death. Well, if you say so, Doctor. Right, I'll go through them right away. Flying doctor calling base. Flying doctor calling base. Come in, please. Base receiving you. Go ahead, Dr. Graham. Alec, have there been any calls of anyone complaining of high temperature, backache, or swollen glands? Nothing since you left. Okay, be sure and let me know if any such calls come in, will you? Collins Mill to Flying Doctor. Come in, Mr. Collins. Found the two parties you're looking for. Good, let's have them. Fred Summers over at Quentin. Yes. And the other Sam Newton at Quarry Gate. Thanks, Mr. Collins. Give me the map, Charlie. Now, Quentin's too far north, Charlie. It's not in our circle. Better head for Sam Newton at Quarry Gate. But if he's got the money, he'll never talk. Uh, we'll worry about that obstacle when we come to it.
Looks like they've been busy. Yep. Best English oak. Yeah? I'm uh, Dr. Graham from the Flying Doctor Service. Well, what do you want here? I never call for a doctor. No, I know. I, uh, I just wanted to talk to you. What about? May we come in for a moment? My wife and kid. One of the flying doctors. Hello. What do you want to see me about? Have you had anyone staying here lately? This isn't a hotel. There's just the three of us here. That's all. You sure no one stopped by for three or four days? No. What are you getting at? A man called Jeff Martin, who also calls himself Barney Mason, has been hiding out at one of the homesteads. Not here. I never heard of him. Besides, I wouldn't hide anyone. If you did, I've got to know about it. You see, Martin died a couple of hours ago from pneumonic plague. Sorry, I can't help you, Doctor. He's not been here. Whoever was hiding him may have picked up the disease. I can't treat it unless I know in time. How many times do I have to tell you? He hasn't been here. Once that plague really takes hold, there's no hope. It's fatal. What are you trying to do? Come in here, scaring the daylights out of us? Have you ever seen a case of pneumonic plague? The temperature shoots to 104. Your body aches all over. Your glands swell. Your speech becomes blurred. Every breath becomes a lifetime of agony. Then delirium. Then finally, heart failure. What's your game? Now, come on, get out of here. Would you come over here a minute, dear? Come on. Open your mouth real wide, huh? That's the girl. What are you looking at her for? She's all right, isn't she? Lift your arms. You're feeling all right, aren't you, baby? I do feel a little tired. Has she caught it, Doctor? Have you got something to give her? Yeah. Yeah, Martin was here. Two years running, I lost my crop and things were tough. He arranged to hide out here. He buried the dough until things cooled off. You just take two of these and give two to your mommy, huh? That's a good girl. Where's the money hidden? Up there. Fifth post from the end. I've got it, Greg. What'll happen to me? That's for the law to decide. We're taking you back with us. I guess you have to pay for your mistakes. Just be thankful your family isn't paying, too.